to my review, ladies and gentlemen. I'm sure a few of you probably wonder, did I actually like this raw? No. I'm going to be straight here. So bad. I may even use that as my title. So bad, this raw. So bad, the WWE is trying to push this agenda of making Cena the best he could be has ruined the show. I'm saying it honestly, this show was ruined because John Cena was overpowered. It was that bad. Opening up the show, which I had one gripe about it. Having a Legends Forum isn't a bad concept at all. Seeing Shawn Michaels is always good. Mr. Cockeyed himself. Mr. Nature, the nature boy, Ric Flair, baby. Hulk is always happy to see. But I felt that having in the center of the ring really didn't feel very special. I would have liked to have them do this like they've been doing with their, um, their panels. Having a very nice set made up specifically for these guys to be seen with the background of the crowd. The fans. I felt would have been better. Now, of course, everyone enjoyed it because it's great to see them. But for me personally, I really wanted them to be in a panel form. They've been using it at the kickoff shows. They've been using it the after hour. I mean, the um, aftermath or whatever they call it. I don't really care anymore. But you get my point. Something that spotlights them more strongly. And it kind of would gave me a feeling of a WWCW type of feel where they actually had a specific set to let these guys come on and actually talk, not just always in the ring. Now, what they said in the ring wasn't bad, but when it came to Cena, I didn't feel a damn thing from him. He felt like ordinary Cena. In fact, he felt underwhelming more than he normally does. Because he really wanted to sell this so badly. Yes, he got the point across saying, I'm going to kick Brock Lesnar's ass. But... It felt so underwhelming for me personally. I just didn't care. And I'm getting this over now. Bray Wyatt versus John Cena at the end of the show. When I saw they're putting Bray Wyatt up on the chopping block for him, I thought, oh my goodness, why? Why would they rush this so quickly? I had a feeling that Bray Wyatt was going to be taken to the woodshed, as JR used to say, and get ten bells knocked out of him. That's not a good thing, ladies and gentlemen. He just won to a Chris Jericho. And now he looks like he's going to job to a John Cena, which is terrible booking. And when you see this, it gets worse. Luke and Erica with him. The opening of this entire match, John Cena beat the living shit out of a Bray Wyatt like he's never... <sighs> you could say, well, this is how the true John Cena is. We're finally seeing it. No! Because this is like a bite off of Brock Lesnar. You can't bite off Brock in this respect. I would have rather seen Cena lose this match. That would have given us something different. If Bray had been allowed to win this clean. With no Eric involved. No Luke involved. No Big Show involved. No Mark Henry. I got something to say about Mark Henry too. You know I got to say something about my boy. But when it comes down to it. This was the most worst match you could actually see. It was. John Cena destroyed Eric, he destroyed Luke, he left nothing behind with Bray Wyatt, he made Luke tap out like he was a bitch. And worse yet, there was no weakness at all in John Cena, showing that he was not even harmed in any way. He it was like he never even got hurt. If he had shown some weakness physically, maybe a few people that were in the YWC might accept this for the ones who don't like John. But in this respect, there was nothing wrong with him. He literally destroyed all three guys. What was the point of Big Show and Mark Henry then? This was terrible at the ending. It was terrible in the beginning. It was. And I'm moving on. Shit. Now, something that pisses me off even more. Which kind of leads into what I said with, J with Mark Henry. Jack Swagger versus Rusev. Now it's understood they had to have a rematch. And there's nothing wrong with that. 
Jack could not continue because of his ribs. He got the shit kicked out of him. He got 12 bells kicked out of him because of his ribs. And JBL sold it pretty well. I have to admit that. He did a very good job. Michael Cole, I'm just getting tired of him. But you get my point. Here's the problem with this. Mark Henry, running out in the, big, the ending of the show with Big Show, makes you think, well, there's no feud between him and Rusev. And when you see this segment in the beginning of the show, you really feel like nothing's going on between Rusev and Mark Henry. Because what could have happened, and you could have left out Bo Dallas for later. I mean, they did. It wasn't done at that moment. You could have done something with Mark Henry. We're going to put him on the Titan Tron saying, oh, oh, I see, I see you really think you so damn good taking out a Jack Swagger. He's a real American. But you ain't going to be able to do that mess with me. I'm going to teach you what it means to be in a hall of pain. Like that. Honestly, why couldn't Mark Henry pull a segment, a video promo for him and Rusev to build on top of? I didn't feel shit from this. And honestly, Rusev did a very good job working with Jack. I mean, I'm not a big Jack Swagger fan. You guys know that. I still think of him as a trucker, Jack Swagger. The guy who rides down the road looking all grizzly beard and really missing some company. But both of them did a good job telling a good story. I honestly did enjoy their match. But well, why couldn't you throw in a Mark Henry promo segment at the end of the match? You weren't doing anything with Jack Swagger. Bo Dallas didn't come out until the middle, well, uh, until the next commercial. Sorry, my allergies are messing with me. But you get my point of view there. Since I talked about Bo Dallas. Bo Dallas versus Kofi Kingston. There was a terrible botch from Bo. He did not position himself well when he was doing that Bo Dog. Oh my goodness, that was a bad botch right there. And that was not Kofi's fault. Bo missed that spot. But it still got over and it did what it needed to do. And Jack Swagger, who was annoyed because he lost to Rusev. And really pissed off because Bo Dallas came to him in the back with the trainer basically saying, You still bad, you need to believe. He kicked his ass. Which I have no problem with. This is how you get stuff done. I don't know if I'm going to really enjoy this feud because I haven't really seen much talking from Jack yet. Because Jack needs to sell this even more. Does this mean Jack can talk? Hell no. But Jack could still say something good enough to make this interesting. Now let's move on to the Dolph Ziggler versus Miz, the Miz's stunt double in a Damien Sandauer. I'm going to be honest about this. I enjoyed that segment. It was funny. The Miz is being spotlighted. The Miz is being highlighted. The Miz can talk. I would have liked him to keep the title and put him on to somebody else. But at least I can say they did a good job. And in the end, when Damien lost and send and <laughs> when the Miz says, oh, he's fired, it actually went along with his character. An A-lister who hires a stunt double that doesn't work out. So I'm okay with that. And I'm okay with the next thing I'm going to talk about. The Usos versus the Dust Brothers. And the only thing that matters here, it wasn't the fact that Jay had tweaked his knee. It was the fact that the Dust Brothers finally turned heel. This is good to see. Because I want to see something more profound from them. Gold Dust did a great job saying, I want my match now. Get up! Get up! Hanging in between his brother's legs like he wants to go back into the womb. But you get my point. I'm glad to see the Dust Brothers have turned heel. And this could become a good feud. As long as they're not 100% touching one another, it could be good. Now, Los Matadores are back together. It looks like it was Epigo that came back. And it went up against the odd couple, Neil and Slater. I don't really care about this match. They just gave Los Matadores a win. Jobbers gave a job tag team a win, which they need to do once in a while. I don't know what's going on with that. Now, the eulogy of Seth Rollins and Kane and the interjection of a Rolling Reigns. I'll say this. 
Seth Rollins is a good talker, but he's not as great as Dean Ambrose. We know this. Dean was the best of the entire bunch. He was most polished. He talked the best. He got his point across, but I just felt like he was beginning to forget his script. And in the end, seeing Roland Reigns come out the way he did was a good timing because Seth was beginning to lose me a little bit. I'm sorry. But here's the question. Going into their, their handicap match against Roland Reigns, do you believe Roland Reigns and Seth Rollins are going to have a feud because Dean Ambrose has gone off to do a movie? Tell me below what you think. It looks like it's going to be that because we didn't see Randy Orton at all on this show. And now next week he's going to be on the highlight reel where Chris Jericho. Does that mean Chris is going to be working with, well, the, the Randy Orton? This could be it. Shifting things around to make things interesting. I don't know if it was the wisest thing to do at this moment. It might have been better after the pay-per-view. But this is what they're doing and they have a month to build into it. So we could still get some interest. The Brock Lesnar vid pack segment. Video package. I don't really care about. Paulie tried to sell it, but I really didn't care much about it. Because of what Cena did in the beginning of the show really made me feel like, do I care? Because that video package really needed Cena to look weak. He didn't look weak to me when he was talking. And he definitely didn't look weak to me at the end of the show. So me reflecting on it, I didn't really care. Paulie really did try to sell this. I'm not going to lie about it. He tried his best, but even taking bullshit to turn into lemonade, it's still bullshit. And I'm going to leave it at that. Um, hmm. Paige and AJ. Had to breathe in and out for that one because I only have two more things to talk about. And one of those two things really pisses me off. Paige and AJ with Natalia as an afterthought. Now, don't get me wrong. The match was actually very good. To me, for the Divas, when it comes to two technical Divas, I could be interested. And Natalia did a decent job to tell a story with Paige. In the end, Paige won. But then... I don't believe the WWE is going to do a lesbian angle. They're not doing it. They're just trying to show how crazy AJ is. And how weak Paige is. Honestly. That's how it feels to me. Does it mean that, does it mean that Paige couldn't still make it work before Night of Champions? Of course she could. She could turn it around if they let her act evil. Not crazy. Stop the... If Paige stops skipping in the ring and is serious, stop saying you're not my love, you're not my friend of me, I just want to beat your ass. I would buy it and I would care more about Paige in that respect. But like this, they're trying to show AJ is more crazier than Paige and we already know this. And even though AJ wore some kid clothes and showed her boobs bigger than what they really are, she doesn't have big boobs. I wasn't 100% interested, but I will say at least they're trying very hard to make this feud interesting, and I am still going with it. I'm just hoping to progress Paige a little more than being crazy and trying to compete as a crazy woman. That's just me. Okay. Oh, I almost forgot. Cesaro versus RVD for Sheamus' championship. The reason I forgot about it is because I don't care. And care. I don't want to see Cesaro getting that title again. I want to see him do something different. I have no interest. So I'm moving on to the final piece of the night. The two hour main event. Oh! The Bellas. And their video segment with Jerry the King Lawler. I gotta say at least it was funny to hear people chanting Jerry. That's, I'm sure that's what the WWE was going for when they had their fight at the end of it. But when you try to see acting from these two women, I've always said this and I mean this. No matter if I don't think you're that great, look at look at Madison Rain. She's not a good character. She's very generic. But I still respect her for getting in the ring. It takes a lot to be a wrestler. Male or female, no matter how much they're crap. And in this case... I gotta, I gotta study because I am very frustrated about this and it's not what I want to do. In this case, 
the Bellas being in the ring, I respect them enough that they're wrestlers and they're willing to let themselves get hurt. It's not an easy job. But as actresses, they're not even B actresses. Look, in the 70s, they used to have B movies that were so bad, they were good. The acting was so overdone and so disgusting, it was great. We don't get that here. They're just plain bad. Trying to have one Bella going against another, and they're acting like two juvenile delinquents. Well, one is acting like a juvenile delinquent, and one is acting like an innocent little angel, and they can't pull it off at at least 30 years old. This was bullshit. It was terrible. And I go back to the very beginning of this review. How was this show? It was terrible. It broke my heart to see it this bad. Now, I'm sure people are going to say there's some great stuff in it. Even the Bella Twins. And I'm going to ask you this as an honest observer of wrestling. And a fan. Do you actually believe, seeing how bad they acted, did they 100% get, 100 get their point across to the people who have the subscription to the network? And remember, the ones who have the subscription are the hardcore fans, not usually the casual ones. Seeing this, a lot of fans are not going to be happy about this. And that is the bread and butter at this moment of the WWE. They care more about the network than anything else. And if it's that bad, and I'm sure more than a few people are not going to be happy about this, this was a very bad Raw. And I, I really do hope they 100% Flip the script on me and they do a good build up into Night of Champions, but I don't see it at all. This is bad. This filler pay per view is going to be bad. Unless they do something better. So I hope you enjoyed the Zane view. Please give me a comment below. I'm going to get my debate of the week out and it should come out either after this video or the next day. Watch for it. Enjoy it. Comment on it. <laughs> I'm coming. Comment on it. I'm still thinking about the Bella Twins pissing me off. What did Nikki say? Oh, you guys, I'm sick and tired of you guys because you guys want to have a twosome with some, tw a threesome with the twins. With the Bella twins. Well, yes, that's your job. You ignorant. You're there to make them think that they want threesomes with you. That's how you make your money. And where the fuck was John Cena? He should have been there. That would have made this better. 